<laughs> Welcome in everybody to Fantasy Pros. This is the Fantasy Football Podcast. It is me, Joey P. Joe P. Zapia. That is Dan Harris. And from CBS, that is Adam Azer. And we've got a mock draft show for you today. And it is going to be a very special mock as always because we are now past the point of preseason. That's right. The teams are making their final cuts. Hopefully all of us will make it through the show. And Dan Harris, hopefully you will not get cut at some point in time during this show. But once again, we are coming live to you from our YouTube channel. And uh, of course, this is why you're watching on the YouTube. So you can see Dan rejoicing as the garage door opens. And that is how you know it's a real live show. And uh, of course, as a half point PPR we're going to be doing today. And I want to welcome in our guest to the show. You know him from Fantasy Football Today over on CBS. And of course, all the good work he does over there, including the good work they're doing for charity okay. at CBS. With Hold on. St. Jude's I, I'm sorry. Time. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know we have to, I, I know we have to uh, get going. Um, just came across the board. The Patriots have released Cam Newton. I, I know it's a mock draft day, but this, literally right now, Notification from Tom Pelissero. Well, Dan, the Patriots. I, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. No, Dan, I, I couldn't Dan, let if, us go. If, if Cam Newton got released, and that is true, then who's the quarterback week one for the Patriots going to be? I, okay. First of all, can I have our producer please mute himself because I really don't like hearing all the sounds that he's doing. It's it's. I, I'm on tilt already. Um, okay. <laughs> See, that's a very loud loud sound all in right. the background. I'm sorry. Well, okay. So news, we're, but let's, we're let's... here for the mock draft. I, I apologize. Yeah. I just I have to get that out I know, right now. It's live. Here. We're live. Obviously. We're live. And, and this Yates is Dan's is first live rodeo. If I, you I'm could sorry. Tell. Just, very you sorry. Know. Go I ahead, know, Joe. You're very excited. I'm very I excited. W- but uh, I'm also excited for our guest, Adam Azer. Welcome to the program, my friend. And uh, before we even get into the Cam Newton news and the draft setup and all that other fun stuff, I want to see how you're doing. I want to thank you for your time today joining us on the show. And most importantly, I want to plug what you guys are doing, which is the Draftathon to help St. Jude's Children's Hospital, my personal charity uh, that I run a charity league for and raise money every year with the Black Book. And I am so excited to be a part of, just a small part of what you guys are doing over there. So welcome to the show. How are you, my friend? I'm, I'm upstaged by Mac Jones already. <laughs> for 30 seconds. I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on. Really appreciate being here. Looking forward to this draft. And uh, thank you for promoting the uh, the draft-a-thon. That is Wednesday. You can watch the entire thing on YouTube.com slash Fantasy Football Today. YouTube.com slash Fantasy Football Today. You can watch the first two hours on CBS Sports HQ. So it starts at 6 p.m., goes all the way until midnight Eastern. And it's just six hours of fantasy football talk. Yes, there will be some draft prep, but also we'll be reacting to the news. We'll talk about Mac Jones. We'll talk about Gus Edwards. We got about 30 industry analysts. Can't wait to have you on, Joe. It's going to be awesome. Um, we have, we're going to review a draft that we're going to be doing at the 6 o'clock hour. So, yeah, it's going to be great. And again, it's uh, 6 p.m. Eastern until midnight Eastern on Wednesday at YouTube.com slash Fantasy Football Today. This is our draft-a-thon, and we'll be inviting everybody watching, everybody listening to uh, to donate to St. Jude and, and help an amazing cause. Help your fantasy team. Help the kids out. It's a win-win across the board. Also, today's the last day. Go hit me up on the Twitter handle that you can bid on a private draft session with me, Joey P, to help you all get set up for your draft. And again, the money goes to St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Uh, and um, look... This is huge news. Dan Harris, you are correct. Cam Newton being released is huge news. It's not surprising to me, uh, to tell you the truth, but Adam, you are a guest. Let's get your thoughts here on this initial um, like start of the season here, already a big bomb dropping, and we no longer, uh, no sooner said that, hey, look at, uh, you know, some guys might get cut, and look, here you go, Cam Newton, already probably the biggest name we're going to hear the entire offseason in terms of not making a team. So Mac Jones clearly, to me, was the best quarterback suited for this offense. He was very good. He should even have more touchdowns than he has. He only has one passing touchdown in the preseason, but the numbers bear it out. The visual test bared it out. The confidence bared it out. Everything seemed to be going the way of Mac Jones. And why wouldn't you start the future now, right, Adam, when you're looking at the Patriots roster and you put first-round capital into a quarterback like that? Yeah, I, I thought all of the rookie quarterbacks, Lawrence included, Definitely showed some some ups and downs. Jones made some bad throws, uh, and that, I think that kind of gets glossed over a little bit. So there are going to be some growing pains here, but sure, why not? I don't think Cam Newton was necessarily the answer. Won't be long before Justin Fields is the quarterback in Chicago, let's be real here. So uh, these teams know what they're doing. 
this is more passing, right? He, I don't know mm -hmm. if he's going to be better than Cam Newton, but he's going to throw for more yards because he's not going to run nearly as often. Cam Newton had 12 rushing touchdowns last year, so this opens up more rushing touchdowns for Damian Harris. Damian Harris was really, really good last year, but he kept getting sniped at the goal line by Cam Newton, even by James White, I think, a couple times, which was weird. Um, so I think, you know, people will argue, well, this the, Damian Harris won't be as efficient because he doesn't have a mobile quarterback. I think he'll still be a, a pretty good yards per carry guy, and I think now he will be the primary goal line back unless they go all Patriots on us and use Ramondre Stevenson there. But I think this I think this helps Harris. I think this makes James White even more in play. You'll have some more check down throws. I don't know how this affects Jacoby Myers because I love Jacoby Myers, but he had a really good rapport with Cam Newton. Cam Newton threw to him all the time. I just don't know what that will be like with Mac Jones, especially eventually the two tight ends will get healthy. Aguilar might be a factor there. Still think Jacoby Myers is worth taking around pick 100, especially in a full PPR league. But I like it for James White a little bit. I like it for Damian Harris because it frees up the goal line carries. And as far as Mac Jones goes, he's a 2QB league guy, and I think probably kind of a low-end one at that. No, that is fair. I mean, he's your third quarterback in a super flex. I think you could do a whole lot worse having to throw him in there for a couple games. Dan Harris, your thoughts. I know the excitement level with you is palpable on this news. So, I mean, the ripple effect really is, you know, Cam Newton controlled a lot of the touchdown equity in that offense. Now, all of a sudden, it does get spread out to Harris, to Stevenson, and to the receivers, possibly the tight ends as well, like John New Smith. So, all of a sudden now, this is a, a, a Patriot offense that looks a lot more like the one we're used to, whether it be Drew Bledsoe, whether it be Tom Brady all the way out, up into Mac Jones. So a very different year-over-year uh, -year offense for the Patriots. What are your thoughts on the fantasy ripple effects of Cam Newton in case you're just joining us being released by the Patriots and Mac Jones looks like he is going to be the week one starter? Yeah, first of all, very sorry for stepping on your intro, Adam. I just, I, I could not control myself as the news came across uh, the scene. And I have I have very little self-control on, on, on a good day. Sleep yes, I, I have not slept in six weeks. I hope to eventually in like four months. Uh, second, the sound you hear in the background are my in-laws in Massachusetts rejoicing because I have said many times my father-in-law was very much on the Cam Newton socks. I got to see the kid. So congratulations to my father-in-law, who will remain nameless for this live stream. Uh, I pretty much agree with everything Adam said. I think you're right. Russian quarterbacks, you know, as Adam alluded to, they increase running back efficiency, but they generally decrease running back carries. So I think you're probably going to see more output here from Harris. And again, as we mentioned, more touchdowns because Newton was really the goal line back on this team. So I think it is good uh, for uh, Harris definitely. I don't know about Myers. Like I, it's generally probably good for the passing game. Jones was a little up and down. You're right in the preseason, but Newton, obviously, other than the rapport he showed with Myers, he obviously was not even the passer that he once was, which wasn't even that great a passer anyway. So I've got to really think it over. The big winner here, I think, for me is Harris, and I have to think about what the impact is going to be on the wide receivers right now. Probably a small bump up for each of them, but I don't think it's going to result in a drastic move for me. No, look, uh, the one thing you could take is that Mac Jones looked very. Uh, confident in the looks, in the reads, in the offense, the timing. He's getting the ball out quickly. He took a couple sacks in that game against the Giants. But uh, again, that's what the growing pains, as Adam alluded to, of young quarterbacks anyway. It's going to happen. You saw Trey Lance take some sacks. You've seen uh, Trevor Lawrence in the preseason. Of course, those offensive lines have a lot of problems. But that Pat's offensive line is, is better than most. So it's a good situation for a young quarterback. And we shall see the fantasy ramifications. But first, let's get to the ramifications of this draft. Half point. PPR, mock draft, we're going with one quarterback, two running backs, three wides, tight end, and then we've got uh, six bench spots here. And, of course, we'll be using our multi-user draft software, which you can only find at fantasypros.com slash draft wizard. It's a fantastic way to run realistic mock drafts against human opponents. Yes, actual humans and the bots, too. So you can get a bunch of friends together or get a bunch of enemies or frenemies, whatever you want. Go to fantasypros.com slash draft wizard, enter that mock draft lobby and use the multi-user draft software to get prepared for your drafts that are probably coming this week and next weekend. I mean, this is it, boys and girls. We are there. And while you're at it, I know you're watching the show right now. Go subscribe to the YouTube channel. Go click that little notifications bell. Go make it happen because when you do, you get three times entry into our contest at fantasypros.com slash contest. If you head over today, we're giving away, and today is the last day you can do it, by the way, on the 31st, the Clyde edwards alaire autographed helmet. Uh, it is autographed by CEH himself. It's the black helmet with the red Chiefs logo. It is sexy. It is hot. Let me tell you, it's your last day to get it. All you got to do is go to fantasypros.com slash contest, drop a review of the show, over on Apple 
podcast or cast box subscribe to the youtube channel you get three extra entries and then you are automatically entered in every other contest after that so even if you don't win this one at least you're in the game that's what you want to be all right so let's be in this game right now adam azer because he's our guest somehow had really good mojo we randomized the order he got the one pick i got the two i'm usually stuck around six seven eight and i hate my life Dan Harris is at the four, so now we don't have to watch Dan Harris draft from the one, which everybody loves. So let's kick things off. Adam Azer, you are on the clock with the 1-1 one, one pick. Gee, I wonder where you might go. <laughs> yes, I was the commissioner of a league. I randomized the draft order last yesterday, and I gave myself, randomly, I swear, <laughs> the number one pick. Mm -hmm. I took Christian McCaffrey, so... That's uh, that is who I'm gonna take, Christian. I'm, I'm sure that went over well with the rest of the the boys and girls in the league. They were, right? they were not happy. I ended up with a really good team. <laughs> well, that's the plus when you draft at the one, you get that really good team, and then you know if you draft over the twelve, like I like to usually, you get two top players, which I'm also a big fan of. So that is to me, and man, I haven't had the two pick in a mock draft ever. I'm gonna go ahead and take the consensus, take the Dalvin Cook. I love me some Dalvin Cook. I've always been a Dalvin Cook guy. Gonna go RB. Derrick Henry goes three so far. Very chalky in this draft. Dan Harris. Now the real draft begins when Danny's on the clock. I don't think that's true at all. Um, first of all, I'm very happy to not have to have anybody complain about their draft position. Uh, Azer, this is your first mock draft with us. Yates and Joe basically not. Unless they get the one and the two, they basically whine. And it's not like they're fantasy analysts and should be able to, you know, I mock from anywhere. I never one. This is lies. This is a bag of lies. Make your pick. Oh, Make man. I time. accidentally said it for a 30-second clock. What a, God, this is like I'm a rookie doing it. Anyway, I'm taking, I'm taking Alvin Kamara, obviously, once Derrick oh, Henry no. went. Sorry, guys. I... My bad. I should have sent it for longer. Our producer's going to be mad. Well, this is going to be wild. So Elliot, Jonathan Taylor, Aaron Jones, Nick Chubb, Travis Kelsey, Saquon, Tyreek Hill, Devontae Adams. Then the turn, Eckler, Najee, Antonio Gibson, Stefan Diggs, Mahomes, Ridley, Hopkins, Joe Mixon. Back to you, Dan, with 15 seconds. Okay, so it's uh, going to be one of the receivers here. And let's see who I have. I'm going to take DK Metcalf, who is slightly higher to me than AJ Brown or Justin Jefferson. So it's fine. Lightning speed. I love it. I didn't mess this up. This is what I planned. Fine. 30 yeah, seconds. Go. Way to go. Way, way to ruin a good time with our, <laughs> our, our lovely guest here. I mean, unbelievable. Not like I have to recap all the picks, too. Not like that was a directive to me. I'm going to go take another running back here just because... I just want the depth of it. So give me Clyde Edwards Alaire here with the two. So I got a little balance here with the kind of running backs they are. Back to you, Adam. Oh, for man. Minutes. You made my draft, dude. Thank you so You're much. You're welcome. You're a guest. Me. I, this is perfect for me. If you start with McCaffrey, you shouldn't really be too worried about your RB2. I mean, if you, one falls, you're great. But I think you take the best player available and you try to get Darren Waller. Uh, so I'm going to take Justin Jefferson and I'm going to take Darren Waller with the yep. next pick here. And I love it. I mean, Jefferson, Metcalf, A.J. Brown, that's who I'm targeting. And then Darren Waller um, also. I, I like him a lot better than I like Kittle this year. So I mean, this is an absolutely perfect draft. And when I get back to round five and six, I think maybe Gus Edwards or Chase Edmonds or Miles Gaskin or something can be my RB2. All right. I'm going to go ahead because I'm equally as happy as, as Adam Azer is. I'm going to go take C.D. Lamb. That's my boy. That's my guy. If I have him ranked as highly as I do, I got to stay on brand. So Edwards, Alaire, Dalvin Cook, C.D. Lamb is my start. Uh, team three goes and takes Kittle right after I take Lamb. Dan Harris, you are on the clock for 304. Yeah, I probably would have taken Kittle there. And Azar, I do the exact same thing at you from the one. I love the, it's almost always Jefferson and Waller, by the way. So for me, you've got the three wide receivers, who's basically a toss up for me with Allen, Robinson, and McLaurin. I'm going to take Allen. I have him slightly ahead of McLaurin, but I basically flip a coin every day and change my rankings with those three wide receivers. But I'm fine to wait on my second running back. I think there probably should be somebody who I can live with here. And indeed, there is. McLaurin goes right after Montgomery, Carson, Robinson, then uh, uh, Allen Robinson, James Robinson, back-to-back, -back. Allen, Swift, Woods, then back of the turn, Godwin, Cooper, Evans, DJ Moore, Julio, Jacobs, Cooper Cup, Adam Thielen, Dan Harris, you're up. So I have created my own cheat sheet, which is something you can do with only one of our experts. And for me, the highest running back off the board for me right now is Gus Edwards. I reran my projections after the move. And I moved him way up. He was the highest on my board. So I'll take my RB2 here. I realize it's half PPR. But again, even though Edwards doesn't catch passes, I think he will be just fine. All right. So back to me now. Uh, Miles Sanders goes team three. I'm on the clock. Boy, oh boy, I'm really happy about this uh, 
this clock that you set here of 30 Very seconds. sorry really about that. Host, I, I, I run the – it's yeah. mock draft day. I try to move things along so I can yeah, do it in 30 I, this seconds. This is not the, the channel. My bad. This is, this is a live stream event. So I'm going to go ahead and take Mike Davis. I just want the carries. I'm just not going to overthink this. Third running back, let's go. Uh, Adam Azer, you are on the clock for two, my friend. Yeah, well, I, I didn't really – didn't work out exactly how I planned. Mark Andrews still on the board. So is Hawkinson. Right, I'm running out of time here. Uh, so <laughs> kind of regret the Waller pick a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, Tyler Lockett. Buy myself thirty seconds to figure out which. <laughs> I love it. Um, it's like drafting on speed. Edmonds still yeah, available it's... or Chase Edmonds? Yeah, go if you want to go to cheat sheets. You can high drafted players and see him on the running can you back. Pause the draft when Adam. Pierce yeah. As our hold on, hold on. I'm going to pause it. Nice I'm pausing it for a second. I apologize, there Adam. You are you ready? Here's uh, what you can. Yeah, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'll tell you how to find Edmonds if you want. I'm very, very sorry about this. This is, <laughs> this is honestly, I. It's not like I have done this 1,700 times I was before. Say, okay. Dan, you're no, like, you're like a human show killer today. I, I am the, the worst. Intro, I'm the an worst person. Second clock on the mock. This yeah. is hilarious. I'm not this even trying to watch Chase Edmonds. By the way, I just want to consider Chase Edmonds. Okay, so <laughs> I would. You know what? You. This is a perfect buying time for you. Consider Chase Edmonds. And think about it. Now, if you do want to draft Chase Edmonds, I'm going to give you the quick and dirty way to do it very quickly on our mock draft simulator so you can go there. But do you want to you want to take a minute before I uh, I get it going again? I'm going to I'm going to take Miles Gaskin. Um, do you know how to find him? Well, he's right staring right me right in the face. So, yeah, I can find So Miles. you're ready to go. I think Miles Gaskin, by the way, is the correct pick over Chase Edmonds and half PPR. But that's just me. Are you ready to go, Azar? I'm ready to go. Can't believe you needed more than six seconds. Ready? We're resuming. Three, two, one, go. Now, after good to go. you pick Dan Harris, if you don't mind, so I don't get in trouble with the higher up. Sure. Just pause the draft before you get your second pick so I can recap uh, for all the listeners out there who aren't just watching all the other picks. That would also make my life just, just a hair easier. I, look, no this is an error on me. And frankly, if I wasn't the editor-in-chief okay. of the company, I would Gaskin? have... Take Gaskin. Take uh, Gaskin. It, pa it paused it for a second. When it paused, it oh, gives you like I a 30-second countdown. Two, one. So okay. Azer can breathe okay. and Man. surpass my incompetence. And intense. the producer also is very upset right now, as I can see in the background. You're fine, Chris. You're doing a fantastic job today, Chris. Don't know if I've told you that. Azer, you picked Gaskin. I this did, is, yeah. Uh, it's like taking the SATs. It is. <laughs> Fine. Uh, all right, so I am up next. I'm going to go ahead and take another wide receiver. I'm going to take all the targets for Deontay Johnson. Hopefully he can catch just a few more of them. And if he does, well, that's going to be a 100 catch season. So big fan, CeeDee Lamb, Deontay Johnson. That's a nice amount of volume and even upside for me. Uh, Jamar Chase, shockingly, look at team three going for it. Dan Harris, you are up next. You've got Alvin Kamara, DK, Keenan Allen, and Gus Edwards so far. Uh, I'm going to hit wide receiver again, and I'm going to take the Bengals wide receiver that should have been taken by team three, and that is T. Higgins. So, Joe, when it gets back to me, you want me to pause there for, just for a, a moment? Week? Just okay. for a brief I moment. That way, I don't I, I don't want to cheat the audience here in all the glorious picks. So Draft here we possible. go. That's perfect. That's beautiful. So after T. Higgins goes, which is a great pick, by the way, Dan Harris, if I Thank may. Thank you very much. Chase Edmonds, Daryl Henderson, Brandon Ayuk, Odell Beckham, Kareem Hunt, Jerry Judy, Kyla Murray. Then on the turn, we get Mark Andrews finally going, Juju, Claypool, TJ Hawkinson. So you have that run of other tight ends. Dak Prescott, Tyler Boyd, Logan Thomas, another tight end going off the board. And that puts Dan Harris now back on the clock where you can unpause and Thank give you. us your thought process on your next pick. Okay, so I'm going to take a look. My roster right now is Alvin Kamara, Gus Edwards, DK Metcalf, Keenan Allen, and T. Higgins. That is good. Obviously, we have a flex spot, so ordinary, there are a lot of really good wide receivers coming up. If I look at the latest NFC Pros expert consensus ranking, oh, good. It kind of gets with me, and that is the highest player, I think, although it's recommending Russell Wilson. I'm not going for a quarterback right now, but I am going to take a guy who we just talked about, thanks to me hijacking the entire show, and I'm going to take Damian Harris here because, again, I do think, frankly, that with the additional touchdown equity that he is going to have without Cam Newton, I think he is going to be a steal. So if you're drafting right now and you don't have an obnoxious editor-in-chief jumping in and stealing the show and informing you about Cam Newton, you can get a steal right now with Damian Harris. So I'll take him as my flex. All right. Kenny Galladay goes right after. This one's easy for me. I'm very happy about this. Robbie Anderson is my wide receiver three. Lock it up. Lamb, Johnson, and Robbie Anderson feel real good. I got my three running backs, my three wide receivers. I would have contemplated Pitts had he made it all the way back to me, but he did not. He went earlier, so now it is back to Adam Azer for two picks. You are on the clock for six and seven. 
Okay, I like the running backs that are available here. I'm taking a look at the the wide receivers I like here. I'm going to do running back first, and I think Raheem Mostert is a better pick if you don't love your team and you need some running back security. But I think for my team, I like it. Hurry, I'll take Javante Williams. Oh, sorry yes. about that. Oh no, no, I just I I'm nervous because of my own incompetence. <laughs> that's all. If you need me to pause, you just give me like a little thumbs up. I'm good. Uh, my bad, my bad. Uh, <laughs> Usually so, the clock is 90 seconds when we have a guest. Just, yeah, just for just so you know. Adam. I'm all just right, the worst person. Seconds. Yes. Right, I'm gonna gamble. I'm gonna gamble that. Uh, nah, screw it. We're quarterback <laughs> deep. I'm gonna take. Um, I'm gonna take Cortland Sutton here as my. That is the correct pick, Acer. I want you to know. There's no <laughs> That's doubt. That's what he needs. He needs your validation on all of this. I feel yeah. like, why not? I like that. Thank you for validating. Uh, many people have called me the taller and lesser version of Adam Hazer. So I will basically, I feel like he needs it. Go Those ahead. are accurate oh, assessments. I, it's say. not wrong. It's not wrong. Go ahead. All right. You went ahead and took Javante Williams. They were two uh, running backs I still like on the board. Uh, Williams is one of them. The other one's Trey Sermon. So I will take him. As my RB4, I feel really good about that. The over, upside. over Mostert, huh? Over yeah. Mostert. I'm not a Mostert guy. Everybody knows I'm not a Mostert guy. The injuries, five teams in three years. He just had a good run with a, uh, an offensive scheme that really highlights running backs well historically. I am old enough to remember all the Denver Broncos guys that went through that factory. And Mostert's just the guy in the factory. Sermon, I think, could be special. And now that I have Mike Davis, that allows me to have Sermon, I think, over time grow into that role with less pressure on my roster. AB goes for team three. Dan Harris, you took Mostert, so tell us I why did. you like Mostert, and then and I'm uh, gonna I'm, I'm pausing pause the draft, action, pausing the draft for you, buddy. Yes, I, it was actually fun for me to listen to you talk about Reed Mostert when it was very obvious to me that that was the pick that I was gonna make. Like I got worried for like 30 seconds earlier, uh, you know, in the draft season when he had the little back injury that cropped up, but he looked absolutely fine. I do think that if I'm gonna draft one of the San Francisco running backs, which I'm not necessarily going to do in every draft, it is gonna be Mostert over Sermon. I understand. The reason why, Joe, you like Sermon, I know you've been down on Mostert, but look, regardless of his career, it's just injuries with him. Like he will be effective when he's on the field. And for right now, he's on the field. So I will take him. I think he'll be somebody who I can start early. Uh, Azar, I do want to ask you, would you take Mostert over Sermon? Yeah, Mostert's awesome. He had the two fastest plays by a running back last year. He ran about yeah. two miles per hour, one on a run, one on a pass. Um, he's great. He's the starter. And Sermon, I have some doubts about him. Uh, he's he didn't have a good 40, but he had a very good 10 yard dash or 10 yard, whatever the heck they call it. And I know the <laughs> Niners value that he's got a good burst. They think he's good for his, for their scheme. But there it is just injuries for Mostert. If he stays healthy, he's the starter. And I have no reason to think he's not the better player in the battle there. All right. So after Mostert goes Russell Wilson, Noah Fant, Michael Thomas, Debo Samuel, Justin Herbert, Corey Davis, Devontae Smith, Ronald Jones. And at the turn. Jalen Waddle goes, hurts my soul. I want him to make it back to me. Melvin Gordon, DJ Chark, Leonard Fournette, Brandon Cooks, LaVisca Chenault, another guy I was hoping might slip by. He did not. Aaron Rodgers, Jarvis Landry. This is why I use the draft wizard. Nobody slips by. Dan Harris, you are up for 809. What's the pick? All right, I'm going to resume the draft, so I'll get a little countdown here. Again, I very much apologize. I would discipline... Uh, the person who messed it up, but it's me. And so I'm not going to do that. Um, so I am going to take Michael Carter. I'll give you a little heads up on it. I'm going to take Michael Carter. Obviously, we've got the three headed running back uh, in with the Jets, who I'm a fan of, as everybody knows here who listens to this. I do not expect Michael Carter to be somebody who I can start right away. But the fact is, I have a lot of running back depth right now. I've already taken Damian Harris. I've taken Raheem Mostert. I probably could go wide receiver here, but I don't love the options. So I am going to take Michael Carter. I'm just going to pound the running back depth. And then I feel like I can pretty much ignore the position for the rest of the draft. I just got a text on my phone from our friend Eric Young. And I can't even say it. It's about Mac Jones. But I, I can't <laughs> say the uh, <clears throat> exact things that he's saying about it, how excited he is about this. So uh, Tom Brady, speaking of that, goes next. Damn which it. puts me up in a spot here where, you know what? I've got my three wideouts and it's a half PPR, which means that I'm going to favor touchdowns a little bit more. I'll wait the one-week suspension. I'll take Will Fuller. Let's go. Will Fuller scores touchdowns. I like that. Let's get that guy in there as my fourth wide receiver. I will take that, especially after that run. I have a lot of questions about the guys remaining. Adam Azer, you are now up for 8-12 and 9-1. Yeah, I really wanted Tom Brady. I was about to go with this whole thing about how, oh, man, this is the best pick I've made all draft. But <laughs> then so I'll take Jalen Hurts. And at this point, you know, running back's not great. I'll probably just build out some wide receiver depth here. And I like the cheat sheet function, by the way. Very cool stuff. See, Thank you. See, even Adam Azer also another. We, we use that as an endorsement, right, Dan? We'll put it on the Correct. top of the draft wizard. 
Yeah. Better I'm, version, better version of Dan Harris likes the cheat sheet. <laughs> and taller. Don't forget taller. No. Definitely okay. taller. Uh, I'm gonna take Michael Gallup. There you go. Gallup and Jalen Hurts. That puts me back on the clock. And you know, there is that one quarterback that Danny boy, you know that I like, and it's Ryan Tannehill. Give me Tannehill right there. That's why I was willing to let him go. And I got the thumbs up from the whiz. Experts say Ryan Tannehill at number 84, and you got him at number 98. Good job, Joe. I need that positive reinforcement. Thank you, Draft Wizard. James Conner goes next. Dan Harris, you are on the clock for 904. This is where the rubber meets the road a little bit for me. Um, everybody has a quarterback, I believe, other than me, so I could wait. But I did this in a mock draft like five minutes ago, and somebody took a backup quarterback. For me, I've said it. When I know that the next quarterback on my board after somebody remaining is Joe Burrow, that is when I move. Matthew Stafford is my 12th quarterback. I, I don't have – I'll pause it, Joe, so you can get there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a huge difference for me between – uh, Matthew Stafford and Ryan Tannehill and Jalen Hurts and Tom Brady, frankly, that's a tier for me. So I, I'm taking Stafford. My guess is I could have waited and nobody would have taken a backup quarterback. But today is our mock draft day. I literally did a mock draft at, right before we did this. And that exact same situation happened. And I waited on Stafford and somebody took a backup quarterback. So you got I'm taking Stafford. I got scared. Got I, scared. I draft scared. What do you want? That's, right. that's, that's, that's what everybody knows about me. Dan Harris. That's in his Twitter handle, by the way. Folks. Correct. Dan Harris. Absolutely. EIC of Fantasy Pros, draft, hashtag draft scare. Uh, yes. Darnell Mooney goes after Stafford. Great value there. Another guy I had my eye on. Curtis Samuel, Kenyon Drake, Zach Moss, David Johnson, Mike Williams, Michael Pittman Jr., A.J. Dillon, then Devin Singletary. Wrapping around, Jamal Williams, Marvin Jones, Sony Michelle, Naheem Hines, Elijah Moore, Latavius Murray, and Jacoby Myers. So strong round there in terms of value. And this just goes to show you guys, 9 and 10, Lots of good value in those rounds where you can make up ground at wide receiver, especially Dan Harris. You are now back up on the clock for 10.09. Okay, so I am resuming the draft. And really, there are a couple tight ends I'm looking at, but the bottom line is two of the next, you know, before it gets back to me, two of the three have a tight end already, so it doesn't seem like I need to go there. The problem is there's really nobody else I, I want here. So uh, I might just buy myself some time because I have a feeling – that the highest player on my board is uh, somebody uh, who is going to be available anyway. So I'm going to wait and I'm going to take Tyler Higby. Now, most of the experts, yeah. the, the the higher number of experts recommend Robert Tunyon. I have talked about why I don't love Tunyon this year. I'm not completely avoiding him. Tyler Higby is a guy to me that if he outperforms uh, Hawkinson, I'm not going to be in any way surprised. That was a slight reach, according to our draft wizard. I'm okay with it. So Higby's going to be my tight end here. Very frustrated right now because I got smoked there by the draft wizard, Tony Pollard. I wanted to take him. Uh, so I will go ahead and and I will end up taking the tight end. And I'm going to not take John U. Smith today. I'm going to do something oh. different. I will take Tanya in there. I want to take Higby. I want to take Pollard. Both of those went. Uh, I probably could have waited, but I'm hosting at the same time as drafting. It's an eight-second <laughs> clock. I'm panicking a little bit. I should have waited to take Tony and taking somebody else. But instead, Adam Azer, you're the guest. Now, the board is yours for 10, 12, and 11, 1. Yeah, I don't really love the options here. I think wide receivers is certainly the best. And I am going to go with a potential breakout of Henry Ruggs. And I'll take him as my fifth wide receiver. This is would be a spot in a full PPR league. I'd definitely jump on James White or Giovanni Bernard here. But in a half PPR league, those guys really don't do it for me. I'm just looking to build some running back depth. I guess I'll take Philip Lindsay. I think there's a chance Mark Ingram gets traded. I mean, it makes so much sense that Mark Ingram goes back to Baltimore at this point. I wouldn't be shocked if that happened. Um, so I hope Philip Lindsay can just win that job. And that I, look, that's not an exciting pick. But, <laughs> you know, you there are no there are team, no man. exciting picks at this stage of the draft. Adam. Not at running back. Just yeah. just the handcuffs. Like yeah, that. correct. Yeah. All right. Uh, moving on here, looking through the draft. <sighs> Nelson Aguilar could be out there. You know what? Let's have some fun. Let's go a little reach. Might give me the reach alert. I don't care. Oh, there it is. The reach alert. 83% chance Rondo Moore makes it back. I don't care. I want him on the team. He's on the roster now. Let's go. And Marquez Calloway, who if I had realized was still out there, I probably wouldn't have drafted. <laughs> and all due respect, oh. Ricky Bobby, with all due respect. So Marquez Calloway goes next. Uh, Dan Harris, you are up next at 11.04. Yeah, I need wide receiver depth here. I only I'm have my so starting three. so mad that Callaway was still on the board, and I didn't realize. I, I, look, this is a pick that I, this is the guy who I have ranked uh, higher here. Joe, I'll pause it again so you can recap it. Um, but it is Mikko Hardman. Uh, again, I, I like the way they have used him in the preseason. I understand there was some, you know, people might be 
upset by it because he's not really running in two wide receiver sets, but he is running in three wide receiver sets and every three wide receiver sets. So I do feel confident. I won't say confident, but I feel better about Michael Hardman's chances of kind of having that breakout this year than I have almost in any other year. So as a, a wide receiver four with upside, not my favorite. I'd rather have somebody stronger, maybe him as my wide receiver five, but it is somebody who I'm I'm willing to roll with at this point. All right. After that goes down, uh, J.D. McKissick, Marquise Brown, Dallas Goddard, Devontae Parker, Carlos Hyde, Mike Kosicki, Rashad Bateman, and then Mark Ingram on the turn. We go back up in the round 12, Randall Cobb, Tevin Coleman, Alexander Madison, James White, Darrell Williams, Rashad Penny, Giovanni Bernard, Tariq Cohn. Gross. That is a disgusting running yeah. running backs that all should be hitting the waiver wire any second now. Dan Harris, back to you at 1209. Okay, so I'm going to resume the draft now. And as I said, again, you look at my draft, um, you know, I have Alvin Kamara, Gus Edwards, Damian Harris, Raheem Mostert, Michael Carter. I just, I don't need running backs, but that is one of the reasons, by the way, Adam, you were talking about like how gross the running backs get here. It's pure handcuffs. That's why I don't mind going a little overboard early, but I do need wide receiver depth. And I'm going to take kind of the unexciting Russell Gage for me. Like I, I get like, this is not somebody who I'm targeting in drafts. No, there's upside of course with it, but I really think that it's, it's gotta be Kyle Pitts and it's gotta be Calvin Ridley. And I, you know, I'm a, I'm a fan of Mike Davis. So I am going to take Russell Gage here as my wide receiver five. Just again, continue to pound the depth at running back and wide receiver. All right. After that, uh, we have Malcolm Brown go. I'm up next. So I feel a little bit better. Gabriel Davis made it back to me. Player I've been very high on building some more wide receiver depth. He is now my wide receiver six, I believe. I think perhaps eh, <laughs> I think that's where we're at here. Adam Azer, you are now on the clock for two picks, my friend. Yeah, I like Jalen Hurts a lot, but I do see some downside there. So he's not unlike Tom Brady. I'm going to draft a a backup with Jalen. Yep. You know, yes. if I had Brady, I yes. wouldn't bother. But I'll, I'm going to take Joe Burrow here. I just think the value is too good. Um, and then let's see if there are any other horrible running backs. <laughs> <laughs> you know, honestly, this is a a bit of this is a handcuff, but um, I think Savan Ahmed makes sense here. Mm -hmm. to go with miles Not a bad selection there's a couple guys i think you can make a case for i think you can make a case right now for kenneth gainwell also uh but because it's the half i'm right. going to lean towards the guy who scores touchdowns he might only get like six or eight carries a game but if one of them is at the goal line he gets a touchdown that's good enough for me so give me ramondre stevenson now uh, of new england especially now that more rushing touchdowns are on the board look at this this is the fever of getting able to to draft live right after huge news drops. My goodness, you're getting the full reactions live here at Fantasy Pros. How lucky are you watching and listening? Matt Ryan goes next. Uh, Dan Harris, you are now on the clock. Yeah, I took uh, Tyra Williams, um, you know, with the fact that uh, Brashad Perriman has been cut. They got to throw the ball to someone, and it might be Amon Ross St. Brown, but uh, you not. You pause for me there, sweetheart? No, I'm going to make you have to do this in uh, in five seconds. I, I've got your pause. Okay, okay. thank you for calling me, sweetheart. You're good. It. Go ahead. Yeah, so that's my pick. Tyra Williams, again, just for me, I, at this point, I, I completely agree, by the way, with Adam. When you have Jalen Hurts, a guy who I personally like, I haven't ranked as my ninth quarterback, but it is not without trepidation. So <laughs> I do think, especially when a guy like Burrow falls at this point, pairing him with Hurts in that situation is great. Other than that, I'm not taking a, a backup quarterback for the most part. When I get it, I'm not taking a backup tight end. So I'm just pounding wide receiver and running back going forward, including with this one with my last pick. But go ahead and recap. Sterling Shepard goes after Dan, then Rob Gronkowski, Nelson Aguilar, T.Y. Hilton, A.J. Green, old wide receiver run, Kenneth Gainwell, then Cole Beasley, Trevor Lawrence at the turn with Chuba Hubbard, Irv Smith, uh, Matt Marlon Mack, Jared Goff, Jalen Rager, Trey Lance did not quite make it back to us. Brian Edwards, nice pick there. Well done, Team 7 uh, or 8 or 6, whatever. Uh, Baker Mayfield, then there you go. Dan Harris, I'm on full tilt, 1409. Put me out of my misery here. You're doing a fantastic job, Joe. I, I just want to say that. Um, I'm going to, speaking of old wide receiver run, I'm going to take my old standby, Emmanuel Sanders, who I'm kind of excited about uh, in Buffalo right now. Is Again, this is just, I, you know, I not everything needs to be the upside play. Even at this point, I think a lot of fantasy managers think that at the end of your draft, you need to get the guy who has the potential to go crazy. For me, I'm just going to take a guy who... If he is healthy, and again, the Bills have targeted him for years, um, if he's healthy, he's going to be able to probably slot in on my bye weeks or in a pinch. So I'll take Emmanuel Sanders here. It's my wide receiver six. Oh, let's have some fun here. I will take the Justin Fields backup quarterback situation there. Let's uh, get another QB on that roster just in case 
Trade bait, who knows? Let's go. So Crowder goes in between Sanders and Fields. Adam Azer, let's end it strong, baby. Who's Mr. Oh, Irrelevant? yeah. Well, it's going to obviously – well, first of all, Terrace Marshall would be my pick. But I'm, yes. I am going to actually take Justin Jackson because he actually – I think he has a chance to get some legitimate carries and maybe even some goal line work. I know Roundtree could be a bad equation too. And I just want to say with my last pick of Savan Ahmed – if Dan didn't put 30 seconds on the clock and I had more time to survey the board a little bit, I would have taken Chuba Hubbard. I thought maybe I could get Hubbard to the next round, but I blame Dan for that. So that was a bad pick. Um, it should have been Hubbard instead of Ahmed, but there you go. Adam, do, to be clear, like you do this professionally, right? Like you you do drafts and you analyze football, right? Like I feel like I you you know what? You're lucky I didn't do a 10 second clock. Next time, Adam, next time you're on 10 second clock, three second clock, boom, 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 go right up. I'm sorry. You're you're absolutely right. It is a failure on my part, but whatever. We lo I love it. There's actually on the draft wizard, there's a drop down for that menu of Dan Harris failures, and you can rate Correct. where you are on the scale and how yes. that draft ended up. Speaking of grades and ratings, B plus for Joey P. All right, not bad. The draft wizard starting to come around for me. 89 out of 100. Adam Azer, oh. uh, what was your draft grade from the wizard? Look at this guy. I don't know if you guys, I mean, if you we can, can see it, okay. Azer, you can, and our, our audience can see it as well. If you can look up. Our producer, Chris, is showing the projected standings. Go ahead. 95. I'm going to put this on the fridge. Uh, I got uh, it. <laughs> uh, 95 out of 100, baby. Uh, <laughs> Azer uh, already uh, taking off the pictures made by his children from the refrigerator. <laughs> this goes right to the top. Sorry, kids. I know this Arts and Crafts project was cute last year. Not anymore. But, yes, you are on the top there. Well done, my friend. Yeah, thank my three-year-old going to say, why would you take Ahmed over Hubbard? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't my fault. Oh my God, can you imagine if you had taken Hubbard instead of Ahmed, you would have broken that. It would have been a hundred out of a hundred. Like that's, that's the only difference. Nice. Yeah. The only reason we have the shot. Yeah. And Dan Harris, not too shabby. You finished two. So one, two, three. Yeah, Adam one, two, Azer, three Dan for Harris, us. Joe Look at that. Yes. At that. Oh, this was good. Now, uh, Adam, if you look, if you go to projected standings, I don't know if you've gone there yet and you can see the actual standings. We have a bunch of insights that you could see where it shows you that. You can also go to an expert's opinion tab where it will tell you, and I do just want to put it out there, that Dan Harris graded my draft as an A plus with a 97 out of 100. Mm. In case you were wondering about how I felt about my own draft, I feel very good. Um, but yeah, you can get insights. Is that Joe, by the way, Adam, if you can get there, Joe almost always hates everybody's draft. That's like the running joke where people try to please him and they fail. So I don't know if you have an up or down from Joe. I'm or like Joaquin Phoenix and Gladiator. Yeah, I just kind of hold the thumb out and then yeah, eventually I get it. it all just goes I down. Can, I cannot see that, but if you want to just go ahead and do it now, thumbs up or thumbs down. <laughs> well, I'll, 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 I'll tell you, I'll let you run through your team and then I will give you the Joaquin one way or another. I did like my draft as well, according to the experts thumbs up there. So Dan Harris and Joe Pizzapia clearly oh. love them some us. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I did get it. I got the thumbs down from Joe Pizzapia. B minus 82 out of 100, despite the fact that that the draft wizard gave me an A, 93 out of 100. This is not an uncommon occurrence. Like, this is what happens. You have to draft the world's most perfect draft if Joe is going to even remotely approve of it. So it's thanks, Joe. Love. What are we doing here? Are That's we training fine. people to be mediocre yeah. or to be great? Yeah, it's a it's a good point. I, I'll allow Just it. Saying. I'll allow it. Just saying. Yeah. Adam Azer, did you find any thumbs up or expert opinions? Did you, did you click on that and get any? Uh, yeah, I think it's a premium, right? I don't have the, the premium. Oh, we didn't link him up. Our bad. Oh, we didn't well, link him that's, up. That's another failure. That's, that's an error, again, on the editor-in-chief. Um, he is just trying to... And it, what's funny is I put all these roadblocks in front of Adam to try to won. make him fail, and the dude comes in here and he just busts out an A in the spot. This is the worst, and it's why I am the lesser and taller version of you, as as some of our audience oh, members have good. said. So, All right. Well, well Adam Azer, I will, I will officially give you the thumbs up and thumbs down here. Let's roll through your team. Uh, if you will. And uh, if you go, you can always search uh, for the draft board and then you can always click uh, by team. You can actually see them by position order, if you like, instead of by the draft board. But you've got Jalen Hurts at quarterback, Christian McCaffrey, Miles Gaskin, your two running backs, your wide receiving core, Justin Jefferson, Tyler Lockett, Cortland Sutton, very strong tight end, Darren Waller, well above average. We know that. Javante Williams is that flex RB with upside. Beautiful work there. My God, this is a work of art, Adam Azer. Joe Burrow on the bench with Michael Gallup, Philip Lindsay, Henry Ruggs, Salvin Ahmed, also known sometimes as Chuba Hubbard, and Justin Jackson. So what are your thoughts before I, I give you your, your thumbs up or thumbs down? Yeah, I, look, if I looked at it and I said, well, you know, for having McCaffrey having the first pick, I, I didn't do great. But 
it's Darren Waller. Darren Waller is the key to the team here because ordinarily I'd like to have a better RB2. Miles Gaskin, maybe he'll be great. I think there's some bust potential there, and I think I'm going to have to wait probably half a season before Javante Williams is the stud that I expect him to be. But, I look, I, I could be great at quarterback. Um, obviously, I have McCaffrey. Like you, you can't have a bad team with McCaffrey. He's that good. So as long as Darren Waller, who was a top 10 wide receiver last year, number six per game in full PPR, uh, if he had been a wide receiver, as long as Darren Waller is Darren Waller, I think this team is great. If Darren Waller struggles, then I'm probably going to regret not having uh, a second running back better than Gaskin. But I, I'm very happy with the team, and uh, you you really should be. I mean, it's it's just drafting one. If anybody has their pick of where to where to pick, you should pick number one. Uh, I I like it. I'm happy with the way it turned out. <laughs> oh, thumbs up! You the got first the thumbs time up ever. there. First time ever. Not from the first Joey time Pete. ever, but you got to earn it. I don't just give them away for free. Yates is on the corner right now. It's why he's in here right now. He's just giving away thumbs up. Here's a here's an A plus for you and A minus. He's like Oprah giving out draft That's grades. Cool. Not me. I want to make you great. Okay, Dan Harris, you can fly through your own team since you've Thanks. You know, hijacked the rest of this show. I really appreciate. It. I I will say that uh, and Adam, I've I've drafted from the one spot a couple of times in some of these mocks. The exact same strategy almost every time as you do where you get CMC. It's almost always the. Waller and it happens to be Jefferson almost every time just because I feel like when I'm flipping the coin with that that you can't screw that up I do want to know though you did take Gaskin over let's say Daryl Henderson and I know a couple of guys here like Yates still super high on Daryl Henderson what's your outlook on him just generally with the Sony Michelle trade yeah I'm fairly high on him but he's so injury prone I just don't know that he makes it through the season and I also don't know if he catches a lot of passes I think Gaskin if it had been non PPR I would have taken Henderson over him Um, but Gaskin, I I do think probably if they both play 17 games, Gaskin might have 30 more catches Mm -hmm. than Daryl Henderson. And Mm -hmm. I I think that will matter. And also I I just think that Michelle is decent competition. He's better than Malcolm Brown. I don't know how he compares to Savan Ahmed, but I think, uh, I could see a scenario where, where Michelle kind of overtakes or, or they split, uh, a little bit too much. So. I went with Gaskin. I'm not sure I'd make that decision 10 times out of 10. They're very, very close in Mm -hmm. half PPR. Well, the best part is the 30 second clock. Just it's like one of those games, right? Where you say, don't think, just say whatever comes out of your mouth. And clearly it's it's Gaskin for you. I've really struggled with Gaskin. And the joke is last year, because I was like all about Gaskin as a waiver wire pickup and Yates made fun of me. So I've been the Gaskin guy. I just don't know what to make of the preseason, right? Like, I don't know what to make of the usage, where they're going. All of them really have looked fine. So I, I struggle with Gaskin a little bit, but I, I equally struggle with Henderson. But I did just want that because I did see he went basically right after that. That's a pick I struggle with. Joe, my draft. Matthew Stafford as my quarterback, Alvin Kamara, and Gus Edwards as my running back. My wide receivers are DK Metcalf, Keenan Allen, and T. Higgins. My tight end is Tyler Higby. My flex is Damian Harris, Bench, Raheem Mostert, Michael Carter, Michael Hardman, Russell Gage, Emmanuel Sanders, and Tyrell Williams. I'm very happy with that team. Uh, I really am. Again, Edwards is somebody who I am, I think, a little higher on than the consensus generally. And again, I had my own cheat sheet, which you can create and bring your own rankings into the draft room. And again, you can use, if it's a fantasy pros expert, you can just use our rankings by themselves. And that's what I did. So I largely followed that. But I like what I did. I hammered running back a lot, like even earlier than normal. I mean, I I hit Harris. Then I went with Carter and everything like that. And then I went with Mostert. And then all the wide receiver depth late, because I do feel like there's this like middle just range of wide receivers. I just don't want, I I just don't want to be looking at right wide receiver there. So I'm happy to more pound it late, try to get some upside. So I would take this team into battle any day of the week. And I think an A, probably not the number one team. I admit Azer's team is probably a little better, but I'm happy to take it into battle. Very good wide receiver trio. I mean, Metcalf, Keenan Allen, T Higgins, doesn't get much better than that. So that offsets a little bit of, you know, having the unknown a little of Gus Edwards, but you covered yourself a little bit there because you do have Mostert, you do have uh, Damian Harris, who I think certainly gets a bump right now. Uh, with the I, and I really think, by the way, with Edwards, like I am not ranking him or thinking that he is going to have that job all to himself whatsoever. Right. And I know he's not going to catch passes. I imagine, uh, you know, Adam mentioned, you know, maybe it's Mark Ingram or somebody like that. I imagine they're going to bring in a, a veteran running back. And if not, then Williams will factor in and everything like that. But I do think that it's very difficult when I reran my projections to see what it was just hard to keep him out of basically the top 20. So for me, I, I'm very comfortable with him. Not in a PPR league, a little different because he's not going to catch many passes in a half PPR, though. I'm really, really fine with him as my RB2. 
All right. Uh, the Joey P roster is Ryan Tannehill at quarterback, Dalvin Cook, Clyde Edwards Lair, the running backs, the wide receiving core, CD Lamb, Deontay Johnson, Robbie Anderson. Ooh, wee. That's a lot of targets. That's like 300,000 targets, I think. Uh, Robert Tunyon's the tight end. Meh, okay. Uh, Mike Davis is going to be the flex RB, but I got Trey Sermon on the bench, so they're going to tag in and out depending on the matchups over time. Will Fuller on the bench, Justin Fields on the bench, Gabriel Davis, Rondell Moore, and Ramondre Stevenson. So uh, in the half PPR, once again, I'm looking for guys who have a nose for the end zone. You can say that about Davis and Fuller, certainly Stevenson too, and hopefully Rondell Moore as the season goes on. Uh, this was fun, exciting as always, we had incredible breaking news. We had laughs. We had tears. We had everything in between. You can follow our good friend Adam Azer over on the Twitter machine at Adam Azer. And again, please, everybody, tomorrow, all week long, check out the draft-a-thon that's going on there to help St. Jude's. Great stuff there that you and Jamie and the team put together here, and I'm very excited to be a part of it. And uh, Adam Azer, any other final thoughts before we uh, let you go for the day? No, I just think Miles Gaskin is is the, one of the most interesting players in fantasy this year. I'm glad we had to have a nice little discussion about it, but uh, I would much rather have Gus Edwards in a half PPR league. So yes. you did okay. the right there, Dan. Uh, validated. Don't validate, don't validate Dan. Now that I know. is the worst. Validated. At the end of the show, the last thing you should do is validate Dan. Because oh, now I got the, the rest of my day is going to be spent with that face. Take a good look at that face. <laughs> that is, screenshot that bad boy. That's the rest of my afternoon. I got the Azer tomorrow. thumbs up. All right, man. That's what I don't need the Joe Pisa Pia thumbs up. I got the Azer straight up thumbs up. Yep. So uh, uh, you down. That's fine. I'm used to it. And it actually said it on my screen anyway. So I didn't need you to actually do it for our live stream audience, but that's fine. <laughs> Adam, again, I appreciate your time, uh, your your insights, your energy and everything in between. And of course, Dan Harris, I love you. We, we kid because we love uh, this was great fun. Next time I look forward for the 15 second clock that you set up for the next mock ten. live stream ten. Ten. that we do live ten. stream. Yeah, 10, maybe six. <laughs> Maybe we should get it up. Maybe that's I'm the happen. worst. Again, I will reiterate, I am the worst. And I have only run every single mock draft that we've done on these Pretty much. since the beginning of time. And I messed up on the clock. So a good thing it was live. Totally and fine. if you want to run an insane mock draft, go to fantasypros.com slash draft wizard. Use the multi-user draft software in order to get that done. You can only get it on the draft wizard fantasypros.com slash draft wizard go to that mock draft lobby don't forget about our contest thanks to our friends at pristine auction.com fantasypros.com slash contest to get involved with that and please subscribe and click the notifications button to our youtube channel youtube.com slash fantasy pros where you can watch all this kind of madness all the time enjoy yourself get some fantasy football some laughs some good times maybe some knowledge and a thumbs down for me maybe an up if things go We'll see how it is. But uh, once again, I want to thank everybody for listening and watching as always today. That'll do it for us. But the story of the game goes on for Adam.